when I met Derek, he first came to me and he said, Matt, I have a real problem. I'm a, I'm a ghostwriter and no one can afford my services. And I said, okay, well, help me understand. I mean, how much do you charge? He says, I charge $20,000 for a ghostwritten book. Now, for those people that don't know, that's actually half of industry standard. Okay, $40,000 is what people should be charging because there is a ton of work that goes into these things. And I said that to him, and he's like, well, Matt, people can't afford 20. I said, well, I can't charge 40. So I asked him this, and by the way, if you've got a sales team, this is a great question to ask. If you are business partners with someone, always be asking this every time they give you an excuse. It will frustrate them at first, and then they'll appreciate it. I asked him when he decided that. So he explained to me that he was actually quite good with uh, Google AdWords, and he had quite a few leads coming through. But then after some dialogue, they would then ask the question. Anyone want to take a shot at what the question was? How much does it cost? And when he told them, crickets, didn't hear from them again. So that's how he determined that people couldn't afford him. I said, so what did you do? He said, I got sick of people wasting my time, so I put my price on my website. I said, how did that go? He said, now no one contacts me. Okay. I said, let me ask you a question, Derek, just so I understand this. What is it you do again? He said, well, I'm a ghostwriter. I said, what do you think your clients don't like doing? I said, well, probably writing. Remind me how, many, how you're communicating with clients. These ridiculously long emails. He would send them a response to their inquiry with this slather of information that they had to consume, with a series of questions that required detailed responses. And this would go on and on until eventually they asked the question, I said, I don't care if you're charging $7, I wouldn't want to work with you. Now, sure, you've got a lot of experience, but they're never going to find that out. So what I said is this. What I want you to do is put your price up to $40,000. they are not paying twenty. dollars let us charge industry standard of forty. dollars And the next time you get an inquiry, I want you to respond with just this. Let's call the customer John. John, I'm ecstatic that you reached out to me today. I just checked out your website, and it looks like you're doing some amazing things. Now, I have to admit, I just finished working with an author very similar to you, and we just had an amazing working relationship. However, when it comes to a ghost and author relationship, the success of the project really does come down to that relationship. So what I would like to do is get on a call with you just to make sure that you and I are a personality fit. I have a few questions I need to ask, and then I'll be able to give you a specific price. Below is a link to my scheduling app. I look forward to talking to you soon. Well, somebody booked a call very quickly after that. And in 40 minutes, with a little bit of help with some sales training, which we're going to spend the next part of the session working on, he made $40,000. Within six weeks, he made $80,000. By the end of the year, he made $120,000. By the way, he made $27,000 the entire year before it, and in October, when he reached out to me, he'd made $12,000 for the year. The following year, he just made just shy of $300,000. He now charges $130,000 for a ghostwritten book. Thanks to his unified message, the authority architect, he's now booked out till almost the end of this year. A lot of people will then ask me, so is that how he ended up on the cover of your book? No, it's not. It was actually because he, he said to me, Matt, you've got to put these processes on in, into a book. And I mean, my, with my reading speed, I definitely didn't want to do that. But he convinced me that we should work on this book together. And I had been telling people for years that somebody needs to write a book on introverted selling, i.e. not me, somebody else. But eventually, everybody said, no one's going to buy a book on introverted selling. I'm like, there are thousands of books on sales, none for introverts. I understand niching. How is this not possible? Well, eventually, we worked on the book together. And he was a glowing case study. So why not, right? Well, halfway through writing the book, he said, Matt, the market has changed. And I said, when did you decide that? And he said, well, I'm doing you know, what you taught me. But now, all of a sudden, people are asking for proposals. They didn't ask me for pro proposals before. And I said, well, that's interesting. I said, so what happens when you send them the proposals? He said, well, then people just disappear. I don't hear from them again. They're ghosting me. Apparently, this is becoming more common. I said, well, you're doing everything exactly like you'd done before? He said, yeah, everything exactly the same way. I said, really, Derek? He said, all right, I might have changed a few things. He changed everything. The stories, he truncated, he changed some things. Somebody had asked him a question once, and he was like, oh, maybe that's an elephant in the room that everybody needs to hear about. So he brought it up on every sale, but it was a problem for everybody that was actually his ideal client. Sales is a process that if you, if you treat it like a science experiment and change one variable at a time, you can tell whether something's working or not and change it or change it back. 
But if you change multiple things, you don't know what's blowing up in your face. So you stick with the, the most basic process you can, and then once you've done that, then you can tinker one thing at a time. So we had to get him back to the process before he started tinkering with multiple things. At that point, he was charging $50,000, and within two months, he got two projects, one that took him to Switzerland and one that took him to London. Made $100,000 two months in to telling me that the market had changed and he couldn't close deals. Asking yourself or asking your sales team, when did you decide that, is by far one of the most powerful things you can do. So what can we learn from this? Well, firstly, everything in sales, can, everything can be learned and mastered. Not just sales, any of these so-called extroverted arenas. And for those extroverts here, because it's about helping you as well, empathy, active listening are also things that you can learn to be much better at. The reason I focus on introversion is purely because we have this thing that we just believe that we can't learn it. That is not true. But the real thing I want you to take from this is the difference between sales success and sales failure is often one simple thing that you're not seeing. So it's vitally important that we learn the process.